In 2018, the Happiness Alliance hosted a panel at the 6th OECD World Forum, Statistics, Knowledge and Policy, the Future of Well-Being. Michael Moser of the University of Vermont Center for Rural Studies spoke about the work that he is doing to measure happiness in the state of Vermont using the Happiness Alliance's Happiness Index and the context in which a state is using the Genuine Progress Indicator in lieu of gross state product. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I really appreciate being here. Um, feel a little starstruck probably right now. Um, but I, uh, my name is Michael Moser. I'm a researcher at the University of Vermont. I work with demographic data. Typically, I've been working with uh, population indicators uh, from the U.S. Census Bureau and uh, using those to track change and, and indicate what's going on with our population in our, uh, the state of Vermont, uh, which is uh, on our map there, a tiny little spot in the northeast corner of the United States. And um, I'll just, today I'll just be sort of generally describing some of the uh, well, some of the things that we've been doing in the state and some of the characteristics of our state that may have lent themselves well to the adoption of uh, the things that we're doing. So in Vermont, we have recently um, adopted in the uh, past uh, 10 years or so a genuine progress indicator uh, in the state of Vermont. Uh, the way that we've done that is um, it's actually instituted into our uh, state our government bylaws so it's written into our state statutes that we will utilize GPI as uh, as an indicator for our economic conditions in the state and um, we <coughs> ended up using GPI measures in our uh, comprehensive economic development strategies that we've done across the state uh, or statewide as well as regionally and we've utilized the GPI numbers and the calculations uh, to uh, help us formulate our policy and planning decision making. And um, the work that I've been doing uh, recently has been to uh, bring uh, the concept of gross national happiness and the, the data that goes along with the concept of happiness uh, to the state of Vermont as well. So um, what we've been doing is, um, in 2013 and 2017, we brought, uh, we actually surveyed our entire population across the state and uh, using the Happiness Index Alliance and um, did a statistically representative sample of the state and we have longitudinal data now that uh, show uh, Vermonters happiness over time uh, through the domains and our overall happiness score and we're hopeful that we can um, continue to incorporate uh, considerations of happiness and well-being in conversations at the policy level, <coughs> the, the decision-making levels. At this time, um, we have yet to officially uh, incorporate that into any bylaws or anything like that, but uh, what I found is that having the data is really important and being able to uh, have someone like myself who is uh, involved with uh, population demographics, uh, have access to that information for our population and be able to hand that to decision makers and, and have that available for our conversations has been really useful. Um, and there are folks, in the, particularly in the nonprofit service sectors, uh, that are very interested in well-being. Uh, we've been working with hospitals and um, bringing uh, you know, community profiles to these hospitals and including profiles of well-being as well. So we're, we're bringing the well-being metrics alongside the more traditional indicators of population, you know, uh, whether it be median income, poverty rate, things like that, and bringing them, those into the same space and allowing those conversations to happen with all of that information together. And that's been very useful. Um, so there are some factors that I think have um, influenced our ability to adopt um, GPI and uh, well-being indicator, or the at least the utilization of uh, uh, or consideration of well-being indicators in the state of Vermont. We are a very small state. There's uh, about 625,000 of us in the entire state. We're fairly homogenous. We're progressive liberals, uh, generally speaking. 
Um, and we are fairly civic-minded as well. We have something in Vermont called town meeting. Every year we meet together in our communities at the, the municipal level, and um, you might have four or 800 people sitting in a room and actually debating uh, you know, the policies that our municipalities will put forth and debating the budgets <coughs> and talking about these things. We have a very high level of civic engagement and volunteerism in our state as well. So these are uh, helpful characteristics that lend themselves to uh, these conversations and consideration of um, a wide array of indicators. Um, we also have highly accessible government officials and government processes, not just through town meeting, uh, but at the state level, um, any one of us in our state can call the governor's office and actually sometimes even speak with the governor, um, and, which is really useful uh, for these types of conversations. Our legislators are very accessible. You can see them in the store. Uh, when you're doing your shopping, you can see them uh, in, at a town meeting, and you can access them and have these conversa conversations directly, which is really useful. We also have, uh, we've had strong leadership uh, in some of the processes, so with the adoption of GPI, there was a, a strong group of leaders that really stuck with it and kept pushing the state to do this adoption. There were folks within the state government and legislators as well that were interested in this and, and they continued to push the agenda forward. It, it wasn't easy, it took time, but we got there. Um, and uh, the use of trusted voices to help deliver the messaging, I, I would say that I'm probably one of those folks in the state where I've been a little bit co-opted by the well-being movement. <laughs> Thank you. And um, so I'm able to actually you know, bring this information to the table where otherwise policymakers might not uh, even consider, well, they wouldn't even know about it really. They wouldn't even understand that there are well-being metrics available and that maybe we should be having these conversations. So just having me there, bringing the well-being alongside of the more traditional indicators has been uh, really useful in just opening people's minds to, to what's available as well. And ha lastly, just having the data available is really important. So we've got folks uh, in the state of Vermont who are doing, running the GPI numbers for the state, and uh, we continue to do that, and we continue to make those reports available to the public, as well as the, the happiness data that I've collected in 2013 and 2017 with you know, representative samples of the state. We'll continue, hopefully, to collect those data and, and have that information available and be able to use that going forward. Thank you. Join the happiness revolution by taking action in your life and in your community for a happy today and a sustainable future. Go to happycounts.org.